Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. As today, we, uh, we take a slight step back. While I am still curious about the Northern Quadrant here, um, I am starting to suspect we might be barking up the wrong tree. Now that we basically know the Myconids are right over here, and we have a theoretical access point via this mushroom stairway. And, you know, the main reason I avoided going over there before was because it would have led us right through that that explosive fungal field further to the east, but but this seems to be a clear approach, so really, we don't have much excuse not to go up there and check it out. Especially since, you know, I'm doing all this speculation about, about what happened down here, but these guys clearly would have some, uh, some first-hand knowledge. So, yeah, let's check it out were swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music through one creature sing many voices the harmony of an entire collective sovereign he has come he is here the choir fades a single melody rises above the others, brassy and commanding. I am sovereign. You see a vision, your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose. All right, so not starting off on the best foot. Um, our relations do have... Mushroom for improvement. Not sure what their general attitude towards Alithids or other folk might be, so we'll play this one close to the vest. I am but a humble adventurer from the surface. I seek to explore your strange realm, to see its sights and meet its people. And of course to expand my horde, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, easy. Fungal roots weave through your mind, seeking your true intent. Then the Sovereign drones a new melody, cautious but welcoming. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. The Sovereign expects you. The Sovereign, you say? Sovereign Spa. Right next to whoever's got those boots, apparently. Ah, and that's how he knew we were here. Guards posted at the entrance. Oh my goodness, that... That is a nightmare. <laughs> wow, they really, uh... They really went to town on those Mykonid designs. Not gonna lie, that does make me a bit nervous, but uh, we'll, we'll go chat up this Sovereign. But if we see anyone named Saren Arterius in there, we are booking it. We've already got enough problems without getting tangled up in that mess. Also, looks like we have an alternate approach path on that Susser tray. We'll, uh, We'll check that out once we're done with this fun guy. <laughs> Gentlemen. Oh, we have we have non myconids. That's that's a good sign. Oh, also, uh, Sovereign's right here. No, wait, this is Sovereign Glut. Fleshwalker. Tongue talker. Far you've come. Reach into memory. Tell me of home. 
Okay. Um, well, I can't imagine a Myconid would appreciate an urban landscape, so... So let's focus on a more natural setting. The fertile riverbanks of the Chianthar. It cringes in response to your sunny vision. Right, right. It reveals its own home in reply. A humid cove filled with decaying Myconid corpses. Dwega destroyed my people. I am a sovereign with no circle. I do not belong here. I am not welcomed here. Yeah, yeah, I guess having two sovereigns in a single colony would be problematic. I grow among them, yet I am not of them. Poor guy's colony got wiped out. I get some real compost apocalyptic vibes there. Okay, so what's your deal? Seems the shrooms are letting in more people every day. You see a fella on his own on your way in. Dwarf. Balin's his name. Balin? Uh, I've got terrible news. I'm, I'm pretty sure that guy died in the mines of Moria. Uh, but no, no, I don't believe I have. Right. Never mind. Well, give me some details. What does your friend Balin look like? Bald... Blue tunic, dumb as a stick. And your relation to this Balin is what? My useless husband. Sent him for an errand. It's no surprise he's made a mess of it. Mm hmm. It, it does sound like you two are quite happy together. So, would you like some help finding him or. Knock yourself out? But don't come begging for coin if you find him. You try to ransom him to me, you'll find yourself skint and stuck with a fat old lout. A little strange that's the first place your mind went, but sure. All right, let's see here. Corrosive flail. Enchanted flail with acid damage, I assume. Plus a big old pile of generic magic items. Herbalist gloves. Cleansing touch. Cures poison on heal. Ooh, ring of jumping. That could certainly be useful. Though it does depend on... Right, right. Okay, so once for short rest. Still useful, but not... Not as useful as just having the enhanced sleep ritual. Caustic Band with Malefic Excretion plus two acid damage on weapon attacks and Amulet of Restoration grants Healing Word and Mass Healing Word. Okay, you know what? While none of these are really overwhelming, I definitely see some stuff there that I wouldn't mind picking up. The Caustic Band and the uh, Amulet of Restoration in particular. Though the Ring of Jumping could also come in handy, as could various ingredients and whatnot, of course. We'll hold off for now, but uh, I will definitely come back later between episodes. Clear out our junk drawer back at camp, pick up a few choice goods. But that's for future retcon to worry about. Dareth? Balin, where are you? Well? Uh, no, I have not found Balin in the five seconds since I last talked to you. I was actually curious what you two were doing down here. 
right now. Waiting for my idiot husband's return. Lest you've seen him, we don't have much to discuss. Sure, sure, I, I get that. I I'm not trying to pry, I'm just trying to get some context as to what the two of you were doing, because it might help me find him. Like I told you already, I'm waiting for that Lummox Balin. The rest is my own business. Okie dokie. Well, I, I will let you know if I find your husband then. Um. <laughs> she seems nice. <laughs> really feels like they're setting us up for a twist here. What do you figure? Uh, her husband is deliberately avoiding her or they're just up to no good. I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. Oh, hey there. Keeping the old I didn't even notice you. Want Master back? He treats me good now. Doesn't kick me anymore. Okay, Th that's good. Waiting for Master. Miss his scratches. Can't leave without him. So my takeaway there is that Balin used to be abusive, but now he isn't. Not sure how else we could really interpret that. Can't afford to stay idle. We've also got a perception check here. Let me just hedge our bets. I love to, thanks. Something over there. Aha. Uh -huh. We've gotten to the root of this mystery. Balin, where are you? Oh my. Pale corpse. In what otherwise looks to be a fairly normal room. Interesting. Can we, uh... Can we crack this? I mean, it... No, we cannot. Yeah, I was going to say it doesn't look like a particularly conventional door. Not sure how we'd even... as bad as it could have. Approach picking that Very aside well. from perhaps with a pickaxe. Perhaps we'll find an alternate means of entrance. The mighty Ned knows of oh. your transgressions. They must be punished. Right, sorry. Uh, I was. I don't know why you're mad at me for trying to inspect that, but. Um... I apologize. I, I was just curious. Thank goodness. The Myconid calms. You may go in peace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got to be really careful about what we interact with here. Though, apparently, that thing puts out hasting spores. Interesting. Potentially useful, but also very short-lived. The timer on that thing was like, what, six seconds? So one combat round. Oh, uh, spicy sausage just lying out in the grass. I'll take that, I guess. Fungus and mold glaze the grotesque creature's face and body. A voice drifts into your mind as you gaze upon the misshapen servant. Leave this one. Come to me. We must speak. Right, sure. Okay, so... So no point in talking to the individual Myconids, at least not until we've met with Spa. Ooh, more non-Myconids. Let's see what's going on over here. Blurg. <laughs> that is quite a name, my friend. Bibberbang. Man, they are uh, really knocking it out of the park with these names. 
seeing the shattered Seldarine and meticulous notes. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull, the spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg, proud member of the Society of Brilliance at your service. Or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than that of the fungi. I mean, I'd, I'd certainly hope so. So the, uh, the Society of Brilliance, you say? I'm afraid I'm in the dark on that one. Understandable. We are small in number and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? Oh, well, you know, I, I am a dragon, am I not? I'm down here looking for strange new things to add to my, my ever-growing horde. Then you've come to the right place. The hybridization among fungi in this circle is truly unique. Neat. Uh, good to know. So hey, you're a, you're a hobgoblin, right? I've got to say, the last one I met was a lot less erudite. The feeling is mutual, friend. I have only passing familiarity with the surface races. But I found that there is as much to learn from an individual as there is from a community. So it is with the Myconids. They live in harmonious unity, but each has a unique personality. Interesting. So maybe I should go back and talk to them all after Spa. I've got to say, Blurg, um researching all by yourself down here in the Underdark just seems like it's asking for trouble. Yes, but it has abundant natural resources. Spores, water orbs, Trillimac. I've studied them for years. Cool. Apparently I have no idea what those are. Uh, so what, what have you found so far? This is not a wasteland. It is a glorious ecosystem. Every civilization here could thrive without conflict. I mean, sure, in theory, but the locals don't really seem to agree. You up for some training? I do enjoy a good bargain, if anything in my private collection is to your liking. Nice, vendor number two with Melf's first staff. Oh, wow. We're going big name now, are we? So that's a plus one quarter staff with plus one on spell save DC and attack rolls and Melf's acid arrow. Not bad. The Baneful. A plus one short sword, which only works when bound. But they get an extra plus one bonus and... A chance to bane on hit. Okay. Circlet of Blasting. Grant Scorching Ray. The Life Bringer. Oh, grants temporary hit points when accruing lightning charges. So yet another item in the Spark Struck set. It actually wouldn't be bad on Auric. I mean, not great, but an extra six a blade of every round. Sunwalker's Gift, which grants Dark Vision 12. Okay. Very straightforward, potentially useful. Boots of Genial Striding, unimpeded by difficult terrain. Also simple, but potentially useful. Cinder Shoes. Whenever you burn an enemy, you gain two turns of heat. 
Engulfed by a vengeful fire, you suffer 1d4 fire damage each turn, but also gain heat convergence. Which is plus one on any fire damage you inflict per turn of heat remaining. Huh. Kind of feels like you'd be on the losing side of the deal. Unless you regularly used area attacks or multi-attacks. Scorching Ray, Fireball on multiple targets. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. And Psychic Spark, which grants Magic Missile and Psychic Missiles. Shoot an additional dart whenever you cast Magic Missile. Oh, man. I mean, we didn't really lean very hard into Magic Missiles, but I could definitely see the appeal if we had. So, again, definitely a couple of items there that are potentially worth grabbing. They're all pretty cheap, too. I actually still need to swing by the Zent hideout as well, grab a couple of items from them. But, you know, that's, uh, that's between episode bookkeeping. Very well. I have mushrooms to catalog. <coughs> Perhaps Amelium is right. I should get a mask. Ah, the mushroom hunter. Have you made any new discoveries? Yeah, yeah, all, all sorts of things. Uh, though not necessarily about mushrooms. Uh, tell me, Blurg, just uh, out of curiosity, do you... Do you know anything about Ceramorphosis? Oh, a fascinating topic. Uh, may I ask the reason for your interest? You may... But, uh, fair warning, it does get a little complicated. Uh, do you... Do you have 20 to 30 hours to spare? You were infected by an illithid tadpole. It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Omelium! I hope this is important, Blurg. My Zerkwood samples need constant attention. It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside his head, but he hasn't turned. No ceramorphosis. That's impossible, but intriguing. Are you looking to have it extracted? Geich, your head will make a fine trophy for my queen. Please hold. I understand your rage against my kin. One of my brethren forced a tadpole into your eye. Or ear, perhaps. But I assure you, I stand with the Society of Brilliance, not the colonies of my people. I mean, I, I do run in some pretty strange circles. You wouldn't be the first giant squid I've cut a deal with. Let's hear it. Fool. They infest your head and invade your dreams, and still you would parley. I ask only that you refrain from violence. I respect that your opinion of my kind may be... charged. If that settles matters for the time being, would you like a diagnosis? Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within. Sure, why not? It's not like he could do any more damage than Volo did. As the Melowan's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive. Awake. Almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. 
intriguing. And you can't remove it, right? No. It appears to be shielded from physical and magical influence. And even without the shield, the extraction would involve severe cranial trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I uh, actually had some experience with that. It is not something I would care to repeat. It is not ideal. The process would surely kill you. But not to worry. Should you transform, I will happily perform a new examination. Hmm. Well, what about the rest of what I experienced? Anything you can glean from that? Uh, like the ship I woke up on. It was uh, a giant flying squid ship, like a, an oversized Nautilus. Does that sound at all familiar? A Nautiloid? Fascinating. I have never set foot on one myself. They were our warships during the greatest eras of the Illithid Empire. We ruled the entire astral plane from their decks. The design was lost when the Gith rebelled and ended our dominion. Right. Interesting, but not terribly useful. But, uh, thanks. Thanks. Of course. I am sorry I cannot assist you in its removal. But I have an idea. Oh, perhaps I should start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. Whoa, whoa, hold on now. Um, didn't we just establish that the stasis is what's stopping this thing from turning my corpse into a squid? I do not intend to shatter its protection. I need only bypass the interference that prevents me from communicating with the lava. Okay, and how, how exactly would we accomplish this? A tincture distilled from a collection of rare mushrooms. They have subtle psionic influence. I would require a fresh ton of madness and timusk spores. But be warned, in their natural state, both of these mushrooms can be quite dangerous. Timusks cause confusion in those that approach them. The tongue is self-explanatory. Uh, Amalum, buddy, just based on the names alone, those both sound like things I really shouldn't ingest, let alone both at once. My formula will hamper the more harmful effects once the mushrooms are brewed into a potion. Your sanity, however much you possess, should remain intact. I mean, should is doing some pretty heavy lifting there, buddy. But, you know, by by sheer crazy coincidence, I just happened to have picked both of those things up at a, at a tower just across the way. These are fine specimens. It will only take me a moment to brew them to proper potency. Omeluum turns away to prepare the potion, lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draft. I can make no promises as to its taste. I don't know, bud, this is starting to sound pretty distasteful, but, um... What, what exactly is this supposed to do? It will lower the psionic defenses around the lava. If I cannot remove it, I may still be able to tell you more about its origin. Omeluum watches you with cautious intensity. It expects doubt. It expects fear. 
Okay, there's clearly something you're not telling me here. This thing's not gonna, like, cause brain damage, is it? Because I I'm really trying to avoid more of that. Only in that you may be a danger to yourself. What the potion may make you see or feel, I cannot determine. But unless you are already a step from death, it will not kill you. Oh, good. Because there certainly aren't fates worse than death. The potion is disgusting beyond description. The only mercy is that it goes down quickly. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid, but trapped like a creature suspended in amber. Okay, so stay focused. Is resisting staying focused? Not entirely sure what I'm trying to do here. Dark holes bite at the edges of your vision, but the void cannot draw you in. The tadpole spasms, seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it means to hollow out your skull. I will... continue to resist, I guess? Cold blades lose their edge. You are stalwart, turning that tide of fear against itself. The parasite swells with power. More power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeluum, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. Yeah, yeah, I think that potion you had me drink actually made it stronger. I take it that's not what you were going for? Such an outcome was not in my calculations. There is more to this being than mere stasis. All right, well, I guess it's not all bad. Um, I have gotten some use out of the tadpole powers, and at least I didn't lose any eyes this time. Jury's still out on the brain damage. Yet that power may grow beyond your control. I have another intermediate solution, if you are in need. I possess a ring of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? Uh, um, buddy, um, I might have something to trade, but first, I I've got to ask. You didn't think to offer the ring before I drank that vile concoction? 
because removal seemed preferable to negation. And I must admit, I was curious to study the tadpole myself. Right, so we're both agreeing it's basically your fault. But, um, I'll tell you what. What if I give you more details about that nautiloid I woke up on? You seem pretty fascinated by that. A fascinating topic indeed. What can you tell me? Oh, performance. At last, a chance for my 30-hour one-man play. Though, actually, I guess the Nautilus would only be, like, the first three, four hours. But yes, let's go with that. I will show him my unholy acting talent! <laughs> yeah. Bad voila. What a brilliant experience. To feel one step closer to my ancestors is a fine gift indeed. Here, it is yours. May it serve you as well as it has served me. Nice. Helps not to judge a book by its cover, doesn't it? Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. I have Mind over mushrooms. Like it, Is my species evolving? Perhaps, but at such an accelerated rate. Mm, it simply shouldn't be possible. Oh, here we go. Survival Instinct. 3d4 healing. Infuse a creature with psionic force. If it reaches zero hit points, it heals instead of falling unconscious. Once per short rest. Ooh. That's actually pretty useful. Yeah, I'd say that's worth a little brain damage. A price to pay for every power. And the ring. Ring of Mind Shielding. Shelter, you have advantage on savings throws against Charmed. This ring is forged from a smooth alien metal, capped with eyes of emerald that watch the world, unblinking. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, based on just the name alone, even before Ohm started hyping it up, that's, uh, that's pretty underwhelming. Though I suppose, uh, I suppose there might be like a hidden story flag on it. I might have to experiment with that a bit. I greet you, son child. And uh, greetings to you as well, celestial cephalopod. I uh, had some other questions for you, if you don't mind. You know, you're the first Alithid I've seen that's not part of the Collective. How did you break free? I was born with a propensity for arcane magic my people despise. It gave me the strength to resist the Elder Brain. Every waking hour I pushed back against its dire hold. My wizardry empowered me. The moment its control shattered, I fled before the colony discovered I had defected. Interesting. But uh, how do you survive away from your kind? Don't you require specialized brain food? In the beginning, I had an arrangement with a lich. Excellent company, despite what one would expect. I required brains. He required souls. A perfect symbiosis. But our ambitions eventually splintered. I wished to better the world, and he preferred its rot. So I left his company, and thus I now feed from those who act against the society's goals.
You know what? I, I can't really uh, come down on you for that because I too have companions who who sate their unnatural urges on those who might oppose our otherwise noble goals. Perhaps the peoples of the Underdark will be less inclined to violence if they comprehend the cost, yes? That would be nice. Ooh, you have uh, stuff to trade? My goodness, three vendors in a single episode. Creations Echo. Magic Quarterstaff with Elemental Resonance. Uh, inflicting Elemental Damage. Causes the wielder to become resistant to that damage type for two turns. The Shade Spell Circlet. Shade Spell. While the wearer is obscured in shadow, their spells gain a plus one bonus to spell save DC, making them more likely to succeed. Meh. Ring of Salving. Savior's Allure. You restore an additional two hit points every time you heal another creature. That's not bad. Boots of Stormy Clamor. Arcane Echo Malefaction. When the wearer inflicts a condition upon a hostile creature, they also inflict two turns of reverberation. Which is... A stacking minus one penalty on physical saves. But if it accumulates to five, then it causes 1d4 thunder damage and possibly knocks the target prone. I don't know. I, I feel like most targets would be dead long before you hit five stacks. Pearl of Power Amulet. With pearlescent restoration. You can replenish expended spell slots of your choice up to third level, once per long rest. That, that is good. Especially for someone like Shadowheart, who doesn't otherwise have an easy way to restore spell slots between long rests. And once again, definitely seeing a couple of items here I wouldn't mind picking up. Onolithids, that's new. Definitely want that. So three items I definitely want from this guy. Oh, Elixir of Psychic Resistance. That could definitely come in handy. Oh, that cost, though. That is easily the most expensive thing we've looked at thus far. Intellect Devourer Cerebellum. Which is the base for the Elixir of Psychic Resistance. Yeah, I guess that tracks. So we'll definitely grab that as well. May your travels be safe and swift. Have you spoken with Scris lately? Yes. She is cataloging core to infertility rituals. Oh. Or perhaps after I finish my research here, I'll join her. I don't know, man. That sounds pretty fishy. You might... you might cause a row. And you know what? We are running a bit long, but let, let's go ahead and go through uh, Blurg's notes. We're already here. The tiny ink smudge scrawl in this notebook is squeezed in so little space as to nearly be illegible. Truly fascinating. My observations on the Myconids mirror what I discovered while researching Mind Flayer telepathy, despite only one being transmittable, the spores. Both of these are of biological origin, in contrast to the telepathic bond ritual. How does innate telepathy impact the structures of the brain? And beyond that, how does the presence of another's mind within one's own affect the body? What may seem like mere thoughts and images could cause extremes of fear or pleasure if they are embedded too deep into the recipient's psyche. If such an experience leaves behind a permanent memory, is that part of your mind still truly your own? Whatever the answer, I must harvest a gently acquire 
more of the myconid spores in order to continue this line of research. Okay, okay, so he's just studying the biological components of telepathic communication. Can't really blame him, that would be pretty interesting. Alright, that feels pretty harmless. No real sinister undertones there. How is your more personal research progressing? Not well. The nutrition my species receives from other minds is difficult to emulate. Hmm. Worry not, friend. You'll find the key soon enough. Yeah, I think these guys are alright. The Shattered Seldarine. An excerpt from the Shattered Seldarine, produced by the Silver Hair Knights for distribution in Elastre's Temples. While some modern philosophers blame the fall of our people on infighting, Lolf's betrayal cannot be understated. Yes, it was the Drow's choice to believe her lie that Corallon Larethian had turned from us. But they did not try and dissuade our ancestors of that belief, now did they? Corallon's silence was a betrayal, too. Records show that few Have comprehended the depths of Lolf's evil intentions. To be stolen from our homeland, and have our bloodline split asunder was something only the most sadistic would agree to. Those cruel heralds became her first cultists. They sowed her seeds into the very foundations of Menzo Baranzan, and that city has produced wicked fruit ever since. At the time of this writing, we remain at war. The drow are not simply divided in two. We are fractured. Entirely. Split along as many allegiances as we have cities. There are far too many brave and kind warriors putting blades to each other's throats. The Underdark has changed us for good. But perhaps when Loth falls, the Seldarine Faithfuls will be welcome in Coralon's halls again. At least, Eliestre is kind enough to share our exile and watch over us until that day comes. I have never seen anything like it. Intriguing. A glimpse at the inner workings of Drow society. Perhaps. But at such an acceleration. I was never really much of an elf guy, but I do vaguely recall some of this. It simply shouldn't be. Corallon Lorethian, that's the um that's the leader of the Elven Pantheon, right? Oh yes, of course, and the uh the Seldarine, that's the name of their pantheon. With Lolf having been one of them until she rebelled and was cast out, along with her followers, the Drow. Anyway, uh, interesting stuff. And obviously this is a good place to call it. Especially with a portal right next to us, I can use that to pop back to camp. Grab all of our vendor trash, do some trading. I was not expecting there to be so many NPCs here. That said, we'll uh, hit the pause button here. I'll take care of the usual off-screen bookkeeping. And uh, we will pick up here next time. As we enjoy a nice spa day. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Revenant. Aloise, Croaking LOR, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremay, Kazorm, Mark Giemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. It is not ideal. The process would surely kill you.